Welcome biologists, this session we're going to take a look at these couple of things here and this can be taken from uh, measurements taken from a spirometer. So this is what a spirometer actually looks like. You do need to be familiar with how this is used. So first of all you need a healthy volunteer, they need to have their nose blocked, so nose lip normally by a clip, they need to be breathing in and out through their mouth and they're normally at rest. Now the spirometer contains a chamber which will go up as the person breathes out and breathes air into the chamber and it will go down as they breathe in through the mouthpiece. Now, they also have inside the spermeter, they have soda lime. Soda lime is used to absorb the carbon dioxide, which is breathed out by the person. It's also very important that within this um, spermeter that I have a pure oxygen inside there so that when the person breathes in, obviously they need that oxygen for aerobic respiration. Now, due to the carbon dioxide being absorbed by the soda lime and oxygen being used for aerobic respiration, this means that the the reading that's generated from a spirometer will gradually decrease over time. Also within the spirometer, you'll have valves, which aren't shown on this diagram, they just mentioned here, but that controls the flow of the air um, in one direction in and another direction out. Um, but it needs to make sure that the air passes over the solar line. So this is an example of a trace that you get from a spirometer. Um, you need to be able to label on, a, on one of those graphs these different things. Um, now, it's the most important ones are popping up right now. So the vital capacity, this is the maximum volume of air a person can breathe out, in and out in one breath. So this is the air that you force in and you force out, your vital capacity. You've got your residual volume. Now, this is the air that you cannot leave your lungs. Now, the air that can't leave your lungs, this is because you have the trachea that is holding your trachea, sorry, your, your cartilage, which is holding your trachea open. And you also have the uh, elastic fibers within your alveoli, which um, help to recall back to the original position. So both these structures um, prevent all of the air completely leaving your lungs. The, the, the lungs don't completely flatten when you breathe out. And that's because it has this residual volume inside. We also have the tidal volume. This is the volume of air breathed in and out at rest. It's really important here you use the word volume uh, and not amount. And we also have here the respiratory reserve volume. So the most popular ones are vital capacity and tidal volume. So here are a couple of definitions for you with some figures. I have seen on a couple of multiple choice questions these figures, um, so it might be worth noting those as well. So the breathing rate is the number of breaths per minute, so it's quite easy to do. You can either count them um, or you can be asked, sometimes you can be given one breath, you'll have to work out how long one breath is and then divide 60 seconds by that one breath. But the key thing here to look at is the time, the time in which these breaths are taking place. So you want the breath per minute. So in this case, I've got six breaths in 30 seconds, so I'd have 12 in a minute. Now oxygen uptake is a little bit more complicated. The oxygen uptake is the air breathed into the spirometer uh, once the carbon dioxide has been removed by the soda line. Now this can be calculated by working out the gradient of the line. So the first thing you do is draw a line along the peaks or the troughs and you would calculate the gradient. So I'm gonna show you this in a little bit more detail um, right now. So the gradient of the line is change in Y over the change in X, so the dy by dx. So calculating the gradient of a line, um, you should look at something like that. There's a change in Y over the change in X. So if I look at that on a graph, um, I would do my line along my peaks, uh, and then I'd basically just calculate my um, my oxygen uptake. So I've got 1.5 decimeter cubed, um, my change in Y. I've got um, 30 seconds here, which is my change in X, or 0.5 minutes. Um, and that gives me th um, 3 decimeter cubed per minute. Um, breathing rate in this particular case, again, I'm counting the number of peaks to trough. So it's really important here that you do one full. So this one starts at the top. So I'm going to, that's, that would be one. It's really important you do one full peak to trough. So if I count all those at six breaths in 30 seconds, so it's 12 per minute. If you want to pause the video and have a go at this, you can do. So the measurement represent by X is tidal volume. You could also be asked to calculate breathing rate from a graph like this. So like I said, you need to calculate the rate of one breath, uh, which in this case is five seconds, and you do 60 seconds divided by five because you've got 60 seconds within a minute, that's 12 breaths per minute. You can also measure tidal volume, which in this case is 4.1 decimeter cubed. The last thing you need to know is this equation, which you might be asked to calculate different um, things on there.
And that's it.